Welcome to Instancing with Dats. We don't often use Dats for instancing, but there are some circumstances where this technique becomes extremely helpful. So let's look at how we can add instances from a table. To get started, let's begin by adding a box SOP here into our network. Let's also connect our box SOP to a geometry component. We can right click on the output of our box SOP, head over to our components page and grab a geometry component. And next, let's add a table DAT here into our network. I'm going to add a table, and then I'm going to right-click on the output of table and add a null dat here into our network as well. What we'll set up is we'll treat our table as the source of truth for all of the instances that we want to draw. In order for that to work the way that we expect, we need to make a few changes to our table dat. Let's make it viewer active, and let's add a column to the right. We can click right here on the header and select Add After. Let's do that one more time, add after. And this first column, I'm gonna call TX. The next, I'll call TY. And our final column here, I'll call TZ. Next, I'll add a row. I can right click here on the row and select add below. I'm gonna start by making our first instance at zero. And let's add one more. And let's set this next instance to be at a position of one in TX and then zero, zero in TY and TZ. Back on our geometry component, let's head to the instance page, turn on instancing, and now let's select a default instance op. We're gonna pull all the data from our instances from this null one dat, so we can grab null one and drop it right here in our parameter for default instance op. Next, we need to specify which columns contain the information for our transformations. So here for translate X, we'll select TX, we can select TY for TY and TZ for TZ. Let's go back to our geometry component, make it viewer active and zoom out a little bit here. Now let's move our instances slightly. I think I'm gonna bump our second instance here over to two instead of being at one. Here we can see that we'll get a new instance for each row that we append to our table. Let's add another one. If we right click here on the header for our row, we can select add below, and let's add another instance at 400. Zero, zero. We can zoom out here slightly and we'll see we have another instance. We get add another, right click again, add below, this one will place at 6, and 0, 0, and we can see already how this starts to work. Now this is great, this is a wonderful way for us to think about how we can add instances. Information stored in table in tables is all stored as strings, so this isn't necessarily the most efficient way for us to think about creating instances, but it is a way that we can create them in a table layout, which is often very helpful when we're thinking about editing data directly. Let's take a look at the few, a few other attributes that we might want to modify. Here, staying on the instance page, we also have rotation. So let's go ahead and add the columns that will represent our rotation. We can right click on the header for our column and select add after. And let's add two more. So we'll have a total of three. We can call these Rx, Ry, and Rz. And now we need to fill these in with information. Let's start by saying 45 degrees of rotation here for Rx on our first instance. And that'll give us enough that we can actually see it happening here on our geometry component. On our geometry component, on the instance page, let's go ahead and define which columns will contain the information that is going to tell our instances how they should rotate. For rotate X, we'll select RX. For rotate Y, we can select RY. And for rotate Z, we can select RZ. Here we could fill this in with a little more information. So we might go ahead and just update this uh, with a few other values. And I'm going to set this to be zeros and rotating by 45 degrees here on X, Y, and Z as we go down through our instances. And I guess on our last instance, let's rotate again on our Y. Now this is a pretty interesting set of things that we could do here already. Let's go ahead and add a few more attributes so we can see them realized on our instances. For scale, in some circumstances, we might want to think about scaling our instance in independent directions. So we might want to scale X, Y, and Z independently. There are some instances where we might just want to control the scale of this altogether. Let's take a look at what that might look like. We can right click here on our header, add another column. We'll call this column scale. 
we'll have just one value that will define the scale of our instance. So let's start by leaving a scale of one. Let's do 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and 0 0.75. Back on our geometry component, in the scale parameters, we now need to select which column corresponds to our scale values. Because we'll use the same values for both x, y, and z, we can go ahead and select scale to represent all three of those properties. We can now see that applied here to our instances. Let's take a look at a few other attributes that we might want to control that are over on the Instance 2 page. Here on Instance 2, we have another set of uh, controls that we might think about for how we want to manipulate our instances. And in this case, what I want to look at is color. We're going to use the same approach here. We'll right click, we'll add three columns, and we'll name them RGB. Let's go ahead and start by doing just some simple colors. So our first instance will be red, our second will be green, our third will be blue. I'm going to fill in our extra zero values here just so we have them. Now for our uh, fourth instance here, why don't we make this uh, not just one or the other, but maybe a blend. Maybe we want this to be z yellow. So we can make it 0 0.5 red, 0 0.5 green, and 0 blue. Back here on our geometry component on the Instance 2 page, we can head down to our color, and we can select which column we're going to pull that information from. So we can select R, G, and B. Oops, so let's make sure that B is in the correct attribute. So here we can see how we might control all of that information, how we set it up, how we move across many different uh, pages beyond just our instance one page or our instance two page. This is just a start of thinking about how you can control and manipulate instances from a table. And particularly useful when you have something that's generated by a user that you want to represent as an instance.